your Son, that works for three are gathered together in his name, he is with them. Through this holy Eucharist we celebrate, make us worthy to sit at his table in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our last. 
last confessions. Let us confess them at this time to God. Please say with me now the second form of the Confidium. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. As a penance for today's confession, and as we begin this period of Septuagesima, I would ask you as your penance to please, uh, in the prayer books that you have at home from our church, there are examinations and consciences in them, also in the prayer book that we have for the Holy Mass, the Tan Book, in your pews, there are examination of consciences. I would ask you during uh, this Mass and also during the week to take these books, to pray them, to open up to the examination of conscience, and let us cons begin considering and preparing ourselves for this great period of Lent when we will uh, walk with our Lord in, in His penitential and in, in His, uh, his uh, Via Dolorosa, the, the road of sorrows that will lead to the cross, and may we dedicate ourselves to being as Jesus and climbing on the cross with him uh, to thereby uh, to join our, ourselves with the offering that he makes in sacrifice for our sins. Let us uh, confess uh, today, but let us also examine our conscience throughout this week. And I ask you to do that as your penance for today's confession. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I do absolve you from all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Turn from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Good and evil, 
Whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands man's every deed. No one does he command to act unjustly. To none does he give license to sin. This is the word of the Lord. Today's response is, Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the way of the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their heart. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. You have commanded that your precepts be diligently kept. Oh, that I might be firm in the ways of keeping your statutes. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. Be good to your servant, that I might, that I may live and keep your words. Open my eyes, that I might consider the wonders of your law. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes, that I may exactly observe them. Give me discernment, that I may observe your law and keep it with in all my heart. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages of our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would have not sacrificed the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen, the, and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. This God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. This is the word of the Lord. Raka, 
will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly on the way to while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for, to, for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Sunday. Uh, the message is very uh, easy to understand and very clear from the Mass itself. 
and it is actually a very good way to begin the period of Septuagesima. Because if, if you recall uh, from the penance that I gave for the uh, confession today, I asked all of you to take time also during the week to use your prayer books at home, or if need be, take the one of the mass booklets home, bring it back, but the pew booklets, uh, take them home and do the examination of conscience that's in our Polish National Catholic prayer book and also in our pew booklet. There, there, are, uh, there are a few different forms available and some of them are quite extensive in their examination. But what we are doing in this period of pre-Lent is preparing ourselves. One good way is to examine our consciences. Another good way, though, is to see how well we are following the teachings of our Church of Jesus. Uh, the two that Jesus said that the this, the uh, totality of his teachings are summed up into two: love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And he also said that upon these uh, uh, hang all of the uh, uh, teachings of the prophets. So there is there is a, a, an importance to following the teachings of Jesus. And uh, the teachings of Jesus, or if you will, the commandments of Jesus, of God, are there for us for the betterment of our lives. The Ten Commandments, for example, Jesus speaks to these in today's Gospel. But in all three of our readings, if you will, in the very first reading from the Old Testament book of Sirach, it says, Thus says the Lord, if you choose, you can keep the commandments, they will save you. <clears throat> in the second reading from Paul's le first letter to the Corinthians, it says, We speak of a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak of God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God has predetermined for the ages for our glory. And then it, he goes on, he says, But as, as it is written, what eye has not seen and er, er, ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. This God has revealed through the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything. So we have been given the gift of God, not only of the commandments by which we should live our lives, but he's given us the Holy Spirit for us to scrutinize how well we are living the life that God calls us to live, how well we are loving our neighbor, how well we are loving God. And in the Gospel, we hear, uh, we hear God's teaching uh, to the masses, uh, but especially to his disciples, the, uh, the, the teachings, and he begins by saying, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Jesus is going to fulfill all the commandments, all of the written commandments that are in the Old Testament for us. And they will be fulfilled so that when he uh, when he climbs that cross on Calvary, he will truly be sinless. He will not have broken any of the commandments that God has set before his people. And, and not so long ago on the Feast of the Circumcision on January the 1st, a month ago, that all began when Jesus was circumcised. The very importance of fulfilling the law of God even with the infant who after eight years had to have his foreskin, uh, the male, uh, re removed. And from that point on, Jesus, in his life, in his ministry, in his teachings, he fulfilled all of the law so that when he ultimately gave his life for all of us, he was perfectly sinless. He was the sinless lamb who takes away the sins of the world. And we hear <clears throat> Jesus teaching uh, to his uh, disciples saying, Whoever, you who have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with brother 
will be liable to judgment. So Jesus is taking also the commandments that were given to uh, the, the Hebrew people in the Old Testament and to us by virtue of our adoption as sons of God through our baptism and being baptized into Christ's body, Jesus is saying to all of us, it says you shall not kill, but I'm telling you, anybody who's angry with his brother is liable to judgment. Jesus is taking it a step further. He's teaching in a way that others never taught. The rabbis of his time never would conceive of, of changing or, or reconstructing, if you will, the law, but Jesus spoke with authority. Scripture tells us that. Jesus spoke with authority and he said, the Old Testament, the prophets said this, but I tell you, more is required. Anybody who calls his brother Raka will be answerable to the Sanhedrin and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fire you, Gehenna. Now those are very, very high standards for us to keep. Difficult if we, were, if we did not have the Holy Spirit to help us and Jesus is our guide. But knowing that Jesus has fulfilled all that was necessary, if we simply give our lives to him and follow him, be his disciples in the true sense of the word, then we will be able to accomplish this and more, as Jesus said. You think this is, a, a, this is something amazing, I tell you, you will accomplish even more than this. And it's not, that, that comment by Jesus wasn't only referring to the miracles that he performed and that others, others would perform, but he was talking also about being able to fulfill the teachings, the laws, through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, who strengthens that individual. Jesus goes on, he says, you shall not, the, the law says you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery. Now I want you to think about that one, because Jesus is saying it's not just the act, but it's the thought that precedes the act. Now you may not have done anything that would, would uh, uh, call you, cause you to stand before a civil or a criminal court, but you certainly have dishonored the, the person that you were looking at, and you have also dishonored God, who, who, who gave you a spouse and allowed you to experience all that life has to offer through marriage. And Jesus is saying, if you look at someone with lust, you've already committed adultery. And then he goes on to say, if, if anything is causing you to sin, get rid of it. Remove it from your life. It's not necessary. And it's better to, to go, as the example, into heaven with only one hand than into hell with your whole body. It's better to go into heaven with just, uh, to be with Jesus, with God for eternity, with only one hand than to be separated completely from God for eternity. And he goes on, he said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce, but I say to you, whoever divorces his wife causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced wife commits adultery. Those are difficult standards. Now we understand that there are, there are situations in the world and in life that cause us to fall in and out of love. But what Jesus is saying is once you're in that committed relationship, you have to strive by all your means to remain faithful to one another, even in the most trying of times. And he sums it up this way, just as he summed up the commandments of God by saying they are two. He said, love God, and love your neighbor as yourself. Then he sums up, he sums up also the actions that we have to take, the words that we have to speak, by simply saying, let your yes be yes, let your no be no. Because he's saying, don't, don't swear, don't make a vow, 
because you're going to, if you, if you put it on that standard, then you're play, if it's by God's throne, you're, you're swearing by God and you're going to have to deal with the judgment if you fail. He said, rather, be simple in the way you approach life. Don't try to con people. Don't try to lie to people. Don't try to present a false image. Simply let your yes be yes and let your no be no. And I have to ask you, how much simpler would life be if we could all just let our yeses be yes and our noes be no? There's a lot of wisdom in today's mass readings, in the entire mass itself, in the pericopes, the fortunes that come from Holy Scripture. I would encourage you to use this as a meditation also for this first week of Lent, of pre-Lent, of Septuagesima, and as we prepare ourselves to walk with Jesus on that road to the cross, let us begin now by fashioning our lives and our actions so that they may be simple, so that our yeses may be yes, our noes may be no, and let us give ourselves to Jesus as disciples so that we may imitate God, so that we may imitate Christ, and that others may see Jesus through our lives. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> since uh, since uh, two days ago, on Friday, we observed the feast, uh, or the commemoration of St. Blaise, Bishop of the Church, who was credited with saving the life of uh, a young child who was, who was, uh, <clears throat> who was uh, um, choking to death. Uh, by prayer and, and by healing, uh, the church today uh, blesses two candles, and they, then these candles are placed in, in, in remembrance of St. Blaise on the throats of those who come forward, and they receive the blessing for health. And this tradition uh, is, is going to be enacted just right now uh, in, in the church, and I invite all of you after the prayer uh, of blessing the candles to please come forward to receive the blessing of St. Blaise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, who has created all things by the power of your word, and who, for the salvation of man, has willed that the same word by whom all things were made should become incarnate, you who are great and does wondrous things, awesome and worthy of praise, for the confession of whose faith the glorious martyr and bishop blazed, spurning various torments, was counted worthy to receive the martyr's palm, to whom among other gifts you did grant the virtue of healing infirmities of the throat. Through your almighty power, we humbly beseech your majesty that regarding not our sins, you would deign to bless through his prayers and merits this creature of wax, sanctifying and hallowing it through your grace, that all who with a lively faith receive its impress upon their throats may be free from all ailments of the same, and being restored to health may show forth in your holy church their thankfulness for your benefits by praising your glorious name, which is worthy of eternal benediction. We ask this in the name of the same Jesus Christ, who with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon this can these candles and remain with us now and forever. Please come forward now for the blessing of the Lord.
and for a world that is a reflection of heaven on earth as we pray. Today's response is, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church, for those believers in all parts of the world who are joining us in prayer today, we pray. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those with power and influence in government, business and the media, for their efforts to make the world a better place, we pray. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, for those living with depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, and other conditions that make daily life difficult, we pray. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our parish ministries, the outreach, outreach programs we've committed to for 2023, and the commitments to serve others, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the work of Father Robert Kay and the faithful of St. Mary's Parish, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and Father Adam Zarnitsky and the faithful of St. Valentin's Parish, Northampton, Massachusetts, that they may all experience a confidence and love that allows their church families to share the message of Christ crucified and resurrected with all those in their areas searching for God's promised salvation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our sister parishes in the Union of Scranton, for our sister church in Poland, for the children and teachers in the School of Christian Living in our diocese, and all those individuals in need that we remember in the silence of our hearts. May they benefit from the prayers we offer on their behalf today. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous and loving God, hear our prayers for those you have put on our path to love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he is the spirit that he gave us.
is that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. Amen. which is given through faith in your Son. We ask this in the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him may glory and honor be 
yours with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever and ever.
May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the table.
And may the gift that I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. The Lord be with you. For this is love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment as you have heard from the beginning in which you should walk. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, nothing is hidden from your sight. Through the, those gifts we have received from your altar, help us to avoid the evils of our day and draw us closer to your holy law. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Karen, if you would. 